Our good friend Sean McDermott did a good job, didn't he? Arms. Huh? Did he do well? All right. All right, what do you got? You know, it's going to be a more of a broad answer because I think it's the reality he needs to focus on is every aspect of being a wide receiver in a positive way. I mean, he's super talented. I think the shot's really come a long way in terms of his work ethic, his intensity, his detail, his professionalism. He's just uh, this guy's a young guy. He missed a whole year of running from the range that was kind of shocked. You know, everybody was scratching their head about it. And it was really a tough for him. It was frustrating for him. He came back last year uh, with a great work ethic, and I uh, thought he improved throughout the course of the year. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he becomes. I, mean, I really think Rashad Perriman can be a top flight receiver in this league. He's talented. He's tough. He works for me. And uh, he's really fast. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he does. Right. Another great question. I mean, that's, we have two young guys I'm really excited about. Right now. Yeah. He's Chris Moore. Uh, Chris is uh, he's kind of a little bit of a personal favorite because he's from you know, University of Cincinnati. I was there for a number of years. And, uh, he's got an amazing knack to track the football. He's got great body control. He's got he's got you know hand eye skills. And uh, I think he's going to become a really good route runner. He's got speed. He's got downfield ability. So he's got a chance to be kind of a complete receiver. Uh, no, uh, we're not talking about the We're talking about uh, with those guys, negotiating with those guys. We have been, the three guys you're talking about. Uh, we're trying to get that done, you know, and uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of conversations going on with their agents uh, right now. I saw Pat Moriarty scurrying through the hotel lobby, and uh, you know, I, I got my fingers crossed for all those guys. Well, you know, we, uh, I think Jerry Rosberg and Randy Brown did a great job of finding him first. You know, he's a guy that wasn't really on the radar, and uh, they just loved his talent, and his, uh, his leg swing. There's a certain leg swing type of pattern that our guys look for. And he had that, and he came into camp, and he just went to work. I think the thing I liked about him the best was he wasn't, like, intimidated by the bigness of the situation. You know, being in the NFL wasn't too much for him. Even, you know, lining up next to Justin Tucker every day wasn't too big for him. But I think in the back of his mind, you know, he, he, he says, I can I can learn from this guy, and I can be as good as this, as this guy. And, uh, and I think that's probably the biggest thing that's made him so successful in the world. Uh, right. Uh, you know, I, I, I texted with Gary uh, shortly after that, and uh, I was really, you know, happy for him. I, I would say I was a little surprised, you know, because I think Gary Kubiak is one of the premier coaches in national football, you know, and uh, Having had a chance to work with him for a year, I got to see what a, what a premier human being he is, too. So, uh, you know, whatever is best for he and his family, uh, my guess is we haven't seen the last of Gary Kubiak in the National Football League, and I'm looking forward to that. All right, uh, why don't more kickers get drafted? You know, off the top of my head, Jeff, I'd probably say because you don't have to, you know. And when you do draft them, it can be a little bit of a crapshoot anyway. So, uh, because it's such a mental type of a deal. I mean, uh, Sebastian Janikowski turned out pretty well. And, uh, but other guys have too, but most of the kickers have been free agents. So if you can kind of evaluate those guys and get them as a late pick or a free agent, hopefully you have your guy. Right. Well, I, you, you are you talking about the, are you trying to bait me into a com commentary about the scouting of uh, kickers in the National Football League? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, well, you know, you try to do the best you can to evaluate them, and uh, they've missed a lot of kickers. The Combine scouts have missed a lot of kickers over the years. I guess that'd be the fairest thing to say. That's okay. <laughs> Kenneth Dixon, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a Kenneth Dixon fan. Uh, I think Kenneth Dixon has proved himself. I, I really, I love his personality. You know, I love his humility. We have a, uh, a thing on Fridays, some of our guys do it, called Armageddon, okay? It's not a biblical reference, it's a weightlifting reference, okay? So it's an arm workout and some other stuff that our guys, some of our guys do, led by Eric Weddle, one of our strength coach, Steve Saunders. And uh, so I had a chance to do Armageddon with, uh, with Kenneth Dixon. So I got a chance to see his up close personal workout and his arm strength, which is quite impressive. Uh, but he's a fun guy to be around. 
and he's a hard worker and he wants to be great and he's, he can break tackles. I like that about him too. So I'm excited about him. I think he's going to be a, a, a top back. <laughs> right, well, you know, Tommy Jeff, we're bringing everybody back, you know, until we're not. And I think circumstances dictate that. So every one of those guys is in a little bit of a different position, a different story. Mike Wallace, to me, was a big, integral part of our team last year. Mike Wallace is a, is a top flight competitor. Mike Wallace is a guy that has a chip on his shoulder right there. That's what you need. A guy wants to compete, he wants to be great, and he works that way. So I want Mike Wallace on the football team. Um, circumstances, contracts, salary caps, all that are, are another conversation that you have about every single guy. But I, my anticipation is that Mike Wallace will be a part of our team, and I, I, I know he's working to be a part of our team, and I'm planning to have him back next year. Well, I mean, if you look at our roster, we're thin in the secondary across the board, so that's corner and safety. So we're going to have to add players, you know, at corner and safety. Uh, free agency, draft, guys on our roster right now. We've got to bolster them. Uh, <laughs> The combine thing, I don't really, uh, I don't really remember his conversation about that. I know, he, I know, Jim's another guy that's always had a chip on his shoulder, you know. So I'm, I'm quite certain he came in here with something to prove, you know. And uh, you know, personally, I think that's kind of the way maybe we were raised. And I, I love it when guys, even the top guys, even the first round pick. And if, you know, I think he was second or third in the Heisman voting. That he was going to come here and compete and prove himself. And I love it when guys make that choice, you know, especially the top players. You make that choice because you know what. If you're a competitor uh, and you know and you're truly confident, then you have everything to gain and nothing to lose, not the opposite. Just a statement about you coming in here and competing. Are you trying to hide something? Are you not as good as everybody says you are? You know, if you're I think if you're truly and, and some guys have done it the other way and they become great players. So, you know, I think it's a personal decision. But man, I just respect the guys that do it like Jim did and came in here and tried to make a statement. As far as recruiting, uh, I can tell you this about Jim Harbour, my brother. That is who he is. You know, he's not trying to, it's not a tactic. You know, he's not trying to be something he's not. He's not trying to prove anything. He's just being himself. You know, he's going to have fun. He's going to enjoy himself. So if, if a football gets stuck up in a tree, he'll be the first guy climbing up there to get, you know, whatever happened, you know. Uh, uh, if, he, if it's shirts and skins and he's on the skins team, his shirt's coming off, you know. <laughs> but then, you know, whatever, you know. And, uh, that's just who he is. I think he's really fun to play for. I mean, if I was a, if I was a big-time recruit, uh, I'd play for Jim Harper. I mean, I know I'm going to have fun, and I'm going to, he's going to get the best out of me. He's going to prepare me to get to this level. He's going to make sure I get my degree. We're going to do things the right way. Um, but if you don't love football, if you don't love football, if you don't want to go to practice, if you don't want to be in football meetings, then you need to go play somewhere else. Because that's what he's all about. Yeah, well, I think it says a lot about the program. It says a lot about uh, Jim. I think he did a great job his staff developing those players. I also think Brady Hope deserves a lot of credit, and Jim would be the first to say that, too. I mean, those guys were recruited by Brady and his staff, and, and that's a heck of a class that they put together there, you know, a couple classes with the seniors and the juniors. So um, do I talk to Jim about those guys? Yeah. Yeah, I got a pretty good handle on all those guys based on what uh, Jim thinks of those guys. Fabulous sport coat. Is that is that is impeccable, man? Very impressive. You look good. Um, and of course, you ask a tough question. That's good too. That's what you do. So, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I think you're right about your, what you said at the end. Our job as a coach or as a scouting staff is to is to uh, turn over every stone, to find out everything we can about every single guy, irregardless of. Of, 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 you know, whether they're here at the Combine or not for whatever reason. So we respect the uh, NFL's, uh, you know, uh, priorities, you know, what they're trying to accomplish, and the statement that's being made, you know, with, uh, with that policy. And, uh, and also our job is to turn over every stone at every player, and we'll do that on all those guys.
Tyrod Taylor. Uh, I'm not sure I'm allowed to comment on another team's player. I know I can't in terms of the contract stuff, and I really don't know much about that part of the game. But uh, I don't think Sean would mind me saying that I just have a lot of respect for Tyrod Taylor. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that was with us for four years, and every single day with Tyrod Taylor was just a joy to be around. Smart, you know, tough, studious, always prepared, talented. You know, Ty, Ty can throw the ball. You know, and he also can make plays on his feet. So, you know, I, well, I know this when you when you play against him and you defend him, you've got to you know you got to have you know all hands on deck. And uh, to me, that's that's part of what makes a quarterback really fast. Yeah. Well, whenever you make a decision, a personnel decision, probably in any part of life, you're making you're making a prediction, right? So it's it's a, it's a choice going forward. What's this person going to become? You know, what are they? You know, what are they going to fulfill? What are their dreams or aspirations? What are they? What are they holding to be valuable? You know, what are their values? And uh, so you know, the past is a little bit of a determiner of that. You know, what someone's done in the past helps you predict the future to some degree. But you got to dig deeper than that. So that's what we try to do. Character-wise, we try to figure out who this person's going to be for the next four years. You know? And if it's someone that's going to you know, fit our vision for what we want to be as an organization, as a football team. Well, you know, yeah, I think Steve Bashotti has, has made that pretty clear. It certainly does. We learned a lot in that whole um, process. As I've said in the past, that was not something I had very much understanding about at all. And through that whole experience, learned a lot. You know, and certainly, uh, and a lot of people did, including the, you know, the, the Two, the two people that were most involved in it, so um, they're still very good friends. So, uh, but as an organization, I think that's moved us in a certain direction that Steve has talked about, and then, you know, definitely respect that and agree with it. Right. Well, you know, I don't think I can really comment on any player in that degree, but I think our ownership and our organization, and Steve has been very clear about that, and I stand behind that. We're trying to get Ricky back, absolutely. He's one of the three guys uh, that off the top of my head and others that we're, that we're trying to, to, get, to get back and to re-sign. And those guys, they do, that, uh, they do what you know, they need to do in terms of due diligence and check out what their market value is going to be. And, and we're just competing against the market right now for those guys. But we do have an edge. You know, they want to be Ravens. You know, they, they, they love it in Baltimore. Um, and they love what we're doing as an organization, as a team. They want to be a part of it. So and we're, we've offered them, a, you know, we're very competitive, I can tell you that. What we're offering, and we're negotiating with them right now, and we want them back. And Ricky definitely is a guy that we want back. Sure, I mean, you know, they've done pretty well. Zeke Elliott is a pretty good example of that. So and he's a guy that, you know, we were very interested in you know, when we were picking so high last year. So I think any great player, any playmaker is, is worth the first round pick. Well, our base will be uh, all of the above. You know, I think we're going to be very multiple, being every type of personnel group. We do have a, a large number of tight ends, so I plan on using those guys. It's incredible. I mean, it's like a right a lefty going to the right side, you know, and, and playing because he couldn't swing on the other side of the plate. You know, I just think it's amazing that he was able to do that so effectively and do it so well. Very few guys can pull that off. John, you have questions kind of at, at every level of the defense. Is there any particular area of the defense that you're most you know, concerned about addressing? Well, we were at the number one defense in the first 12 weeks last year. So I, I know we can be a great defense. You know, I know we can be a great football team. There's no doubt in my mind that we will contend for a championship next year. Uh, I'm, all parts of our football team, your question specifically the defense, you know, we, we talked about the secondary, you know, where our numbers are down there. So we're going to go to work on the secondary. We're going to go to work on, on the front seven, too. You know, we lost Zach Orr. Got to we'll replace him with a linebacker. But you know what? Across the board, we need to improve everywhere we can. But the biggest thing, I think, in terms of where we're at as a football team is the fact that we have a quarterback. You know, we, have, we have a championship caliber quarterback. We got a guy that we can go win with. We got a guy that's capable of carrying a football team and has done it in the past. And we need to do everything we can do to put a football team around our championship caliber quarterback. And then go to work on the X's and O's, which our coaches are doing right now. Let's build the X's and the O's and the schemes and the game plans to give our guys a chance to be most successful and put guys in position to, to, to you know, to, 
to, to do the things we need to do to compete for and to win the championship. But the number one piece that we have in place is the most important piece, that's the court. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever we need to do. We'll turn over every stone with every guy that we're interested in. And we'll, we'll find out what we need to find out to the best of our ability. Um, and uh, we'll know as much as we can about every single player. So do you agree with the NFL stance on hey, we're not bringing certain players that? Right, I don't have any, any, I haven't studied that. You know, it's not something I've looked at specifically to say this player or that player, but I agree with the premise, you know, and uh, certainly respect it. Well, we need a backup quarterback, certainly. You know, uh, Ryan's not under contract right now, so we're talking to Ryan. We want we want Ryan back, and there are other veteran guys out there, so the draft would definitely be a part of that. We need a, we need a quality backup quarterback. All right, thanks, guys.